Hi everyone, this is Garezo here and welcome to Garezo workflow number 3. The animation you're watching right now was created just for practice and this time I especially wanted to try my new iPad Pro and Apple Pencil in my workflow. So let's do it. Before we start, I just want to mention that I'm making all the project files available for download for a symbolic price on Gumroad. And as I don't get too much into minor details here, it might be a good way to figure out some stuff by yourself. And I think it's also a great way to support the channel. For those interested in tech specs, the iPad I got was the 11 inch iPad Pro, mainly for portability and 64 gigabytes of storage which should be more than enough for me as I don't use it for movies or games and it's not my primary device for work. So enough of this talk, let's get to the workflow per se. This time I took a more, let's say, freestyle approach. I mean, there was no storyboard, no style frames and no planning whatsoever. The only thing I decided beforehand was that I wanted to animate some hands and that they would be interacting with an interface somehow. And during the process, I just let the ideas flow. Even the interface design came later, after I had finished the hands animation. This is not how I usually work and definitely not how I'd recommend you to work, especially when you are doing something for a client. But I guess this time I was just anxious to jump into rough animator and start animating. Anyway, what you've been watching all this time is a time lapse of the rough pass recorded on rough animator on my iPad. It's not the best looking app ever, but it was an overall good experience to work with. Here you can see I'm using some lines to visualize the movement. In animation, things usually move in arcs or curves. So I think it's always a good idea to draw them on the page and kind of visualize where every element's moving. And this is one of the most important things to make your animation look smoother. You can see that I'm also using selections a lot just to fine tune the position of the lines and then I'm scrubbing the timeline a lot to see how the animation is working. More selections. Erasing things, fixing positioning, that's what the rough pass is for. I'm working on 24 frames per second on twos. I drew some keyframes, especially on contact points and extreme positions and then did some in between using the straight ahead approach. Going back, playing the animation again, see if everything's working, watch for bumps and try to smooth everything out. Watch it as many times as you can each time. Try to pay attention to a specific portion of the animation to see if we spot bumps and stuff or something that's kind of wobbly and then go back, erase, redraw. And here I'm using the selection to modify several frames at once to adjust sizes and position. Sometimes I felt like the hand was too small, sometimes I felt that the hand was too big. This whole process took about four hours to complete. And I guess that's it. With the animation finished, I exported the sequence to Adobe Animate. Just one quick note. After I finished this project, I found out that there is an extension to use with Adobe Animate and you can export and import the layers from Rough Animator straight into Adobe Animate. Alright, so let's move on to the next step. In Animate, I just imported the image sequence to start tracing. As the animation is pretty much done, here is just a matter of tidying up and making sure all the lines are in the right position. And as soon as I finish tracing the lines of one frame, if I want to tweak the lines, and that's pretty much all the time, I apply an optimized shape to reduce the number of points I have to deal with, and then it makes it easier to move the lines around. And sometimes I apply a smooth as well, and this is all to make the lines cleaner and easier to edit. And it's always a good idea to set a shortcut for these kind of things, things I use quite a lot. One thing that I always try to do is to reuse some drawings. If the next frame is similar to the previous frame. And not too many secrets here. You kind of use the same idea as the rough pass using onion skinning and scrubbing the timeline so you can see if the lines are on the right place, if there's no wobbling, if there's no bumps and this kind of stuff. Just remember to close your shapes so you can fill them later.
and it's always a matter of watching again, going back, fixing small details, making lines align properly. Just see if everything is in its right position. And now I create another layer to trace the object, just changing the color so I can see the lines better. And then using onion skinning to see if the shapes are aligning properly so we have a smooth movement. After all the lines are traced, I just go back and start filling the shapes with color. Here I just separated the object in two parts, so one part would be in front and the other one would be behind. I'm using the edit multiple frames so I can fill most of them at once and scrub through the timeline so I can see if every frame was filled. And once again, just watching it all over, paying attention to small details, making some small tweaks. This part took around three hours to complete. And that's it. Now we have all the lines, all the shapes are filled with color. And now we can go to After Effects to do the final treatment to the hand where I'll create and animate the interface. So in After Effects, the first thing I did was just to import the FLA file, just file, import, file. So you get one Swift file for each layer you had in Animate, including the rough paths that I don't really need. So I'll solo one of the layers here just so you can see what effects I apply to it. So it's pretty much um, a hue and saturation and curves. Um, so let me just turn everything off here. That's what I got from Adobe Animate. As you can see, I changed the line colors there. Just I went back to Animate and changed the line colors to white. And then I just imported it again, replacing the files. So I didn't want all the lines to be that evident. I didn't want to appear as if it's just like a simple stroke. So the solution I came up with was to apply a satin, which is a layer style here. And here is just the final color that I got from the layer after the color correction. But to show you how this actually works, I'll get the color from the layer as it is now, which is this pinkish color. And as you can see, the setting effect is kind of hiding portions of the line, which is exactly what I wanted. And as the shapes move, it changes over time. I could have animated the angle just to fine tune the look. But for me, it was pretty good the way it was. So if you enable the effects here, which are the color correction, you see how the setting is working here. So what I did was just to get the color from this. And then there you have it. So that's what I did for the colors and the lines. For the shading, what I did was to duplicate the layer, apply a fill effect just with the color that I wanted the shading to be. And then used another copy as a Luma matte, which is this. And on this one, I just applied the inner shadow layer style. So I did all of that just because I wanted to use the dissolve mode just to get this grainy texture. And everything is pre-comped. So in the main comp, I could apply effects and control the sharpness of the texture just because I don't really love the dissolve look, which is too sharp for me. And that's why I created this pre-comp so I could apply a fast blur and also some color correction to get the final look. So right, um, that's pretty much it for the look. Next, I'll talk about the shadows, which were another copy of the layer with a fill effect applied to it. And one thing that I did was just to scale the layer in the Y axis, because this way I could control the shadow in the contact points. It was just a matter of animating the positioning of the shadow. So I think here is easier to illustrate what I'm, what I'm trying to say. As you can see here, the hand is in the air, it's not touching the screen. But as it approaches the screen, I needed this contact point here. And that's when the scale and the positioning of the copy of the layer comes in handy. Because if it was just at the same scale of the other layer, it would just, it would just disappear behind the original, of course. So if you just scale, as you can see, as the 
anchor point is right at the tip of the finger you can kind of control the distance from the hand to the screen and then it's just a matter of animating the position and the scale of this layer to get the shadows right so for the interface before I started designing I just imported the sequence in Adobe Photoshop and made some sketches which were pretty much just for me to get an idea of where things would go on screen so here at the contact of the dial I made this sketch and then for the second part of the interface which is this bit here you can see the slider and the keyboard and some elements down here this is just a very rough guide so I could organize my ideas I started designing the interface with shape layers as I was going first I did this dial part here and in a second moment I designed the second part here but in the beginning I started only with the main shapes these details were included later after I had the animation finished and in all of them I'm using this posterize time effect just to match the steppiness of the frame by frame animation on twos of the hands and if you look inside here this is just uh, an ellipse path with just a stroke, I'm not using the fill so if you look at the stroke here, its thickness is really high with butt cap and a trim paths that's being animated as well you have these two circles that I'm using Ouroboros which is a plugin you can get on AE scripts naming your own price so one of them is here which is this one here I'm just animating the stroke width with just these keyframes and then the second one are these ones here which are parented to another layer here and in the end it just disappears so for this part where the button turns into the slider what I did was to transform the ellipse to a editable path and then I created the shape here which is the path for it to move along and to make it rounded I just duplicated the layer and changed the line cap to round cap the small button and the yellow that appears behind are just copies of the same path with different trim paths start and and offset values okay so for the colors recently I acquired these two plugins here Ray Dynamic Color and Ray Dynamic Texture if you've never heard of them make sure you check them out because they really make your life easier when dealing with colors and textures inside After Effects in this project here as I'm using only flat colors I only use Ray Dynamic Color but I did use the clone feature in Ray Dynamic Texture which really comes in handy when you want to make perfect clones of layers if you make changes to the animation or the properties of the master layer the clone layers will follow so alright let me show you how this works every color I'm using on the interface here is on this palette and this basically works creating one comp in your project which is this one I'm just gonna let me just split the view here like create another comp viewer so this comp here is where it holds all the colors of your palette and here is just a palette I got from coolers.co and if I change any of the colors here which are effects applied to this layer here what makes it really powerful is that you can bring other color palettes here and try them on the fly or you can just play around with the colors and tweak them to your liking and here you can just pick the colors of your palette and okay let's say we want everything to be green here um, like the background we want to be yellow now and the, the keyboard we want to be this of white here so there you have it you have a whole new color palette instantly 
And all right, that's pretty much it. As always, I'm not getting into too much detail in these videos so I can keep them manageable. So if you want to dig deeper, I recommend you to get the project file. But if you have any questions, just leave your comment and I'll try to answer each one of you. And if you like those videos, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to next. Thank you so much for watching and I see you next time.